The Vikings traveled. They traveled a lot. We know quite a bit about their explorations and migrations to the west, to the east, to the south, and their encounters with all kinds of different peoples, from Irish warlords to Arab traders. They filled up the map of the known world. But is it possible that they also reached places about which we have no historical records they ever did so? Like, for example, the Azores in the Atlantic. In fact, that is quite possible, but the evidence comes from a very unexpected place. That evidence comes from mice. Yes, you heard me right, from mice. Human activities have historically facilitated the spread of various species, particularly rodents like the house mouse, the mus musculus. The presence of mice on remote oceanic islands is quite a strong indicator of human arrival, as these animals do not migrate naturally across vast bodies of water. By analyzing mitochondrial DNA, the so-called D-loop sequences, a recent study showed that it it's possible to trace the origins of these mouse populations, and in doing so, researchers could reveal details about human movements. The Azores are an Atlantic archipelago located approximately 1,500 kilometers west of mainland Portugal, and they were officially discovered by the Portuguese in the 15th century. However, we do have some historical maps and indirect evidence suggesting that other seafarers may have reached these islands earlier. This study sought to determine whether the genetic signature of house mice in the Azores could shed light on previously unknown human contact with the islands before the Portuguese settlement. What the researchers did was to collect a sample of 239 mice from all nine islands of the Azores, and they analyzed variations in their D-loop sequences, or the mitochondrial DNA, and this was compared with mouse populations from mainland Portugal, as well as southern Spain, and other Atlantic islands such as Madeira and the Canary Islands. So key questions of the study included, uh, do the Azorean mice share genetic markers with Portuguese or Spanish populations? Are there any genetic links between the Azores and more distant regions? Can the presence of specific genetic clades provide insights into uh, pre 15th century human contact? And the results were very interesting. The study confirmed that the colonization of mice in the Azores was not a single event, but rather a complex process involving multiple sources. While some islands showed expected genetic similarities to Portugal and Spain, others displayed unexpected links, links to Northern Europe. We are talking about clade F and the Northern European collection. Now, a clade is a grouping of organisms that are monophyletic, that is, composed of a common ancestor and all its lineal descendants. One of the most striking discoveries was the presence of clade F house mice in the Azores, particularly on the islands of Santa Maria, Terceira and São Miguel. The lineage has never been recorded in mainland Portugal or Spain, but is well documented in Norway, Ireland, northern Scotland, as well as Iceland, all areas historically associated with Viking exploration. In Santa Maria and Terceira, the mouse populations were dominated by clade F haplotypes, and in São Miguel, well, here, while the island exhibited a mix of genetic lineages, it also contained some clade F mice, reinforcing the possibility of a northern European influence. The absence of this clade in Iberia strongly suggests that these mice did not arrive with Portuguese or Spanish explorers, but were rather introduced via an independent route, possibly through pre-15th century Norse seafarers. In fact, the Azores are not the first Macaronesian islands where Norse influence has been proposed based on house mouse genetics. Previous studies done on Madeira uncovered strong genetic links between local mice and Denmark and more generally Scandinavia. In Madeira, house mice belonged entirely, almost entirely to clade D, which is common in northern Germany and Scandinavia, but again absent from Portugal. Radiocarbon dated mouse bones from Madeira suggest that the house mice were present on the island long before the Portuguese colonization, aligning with the Viking Age, so between the 9th and the 11th century. The most plausible explanation would be that uh, Viking sailors might have been blown off course, 
or explore, exploring new routes, and they landed on Madeira and inadvertently introduced house mice. Given these parallels, it is reasonable to suggest that North seafarers could have also reached the Azores, bringing clade F house mice with them. If Portuguese settlers had been the sole source of house mice in the Azores, the dominant lineages should actually match those of mainland Portugal and Spain. However, clade F is entirely absent from these regions, reinforcing the hypothesis that it was introduced from northern Europe rather than from Iberia. During the Viking Age, Norse mariners were highly skilled navigators. They reached Iceland in the 9th century, Greenland in the 10th century, and even some parts of North America, um, specifically Newfoundland around the year 1000. Actually, more specific now, we actually do have a date for that, uh, which is 1021. So such voyages demonstrate that they were very much capable of covering vast distances across the Atlantic, making it entirely plausible that they could have also reached places like the Azores. Furthermore, we also have some historical maps providing additional clues. The 1351 Medici Genovese map appears to depict the Azores nearly a century before the official Portuguese discovery, suggesting prior knowledge of the islands. And there is also some speculation that this information may have in fact derived from earlier Norse voyages. While the presence of clade F mice on the Azores provides indirect evidence for Norse activity, alternative explanations should also be considered. For example, it is possible that clade F mice were introduced to the Azores through later European trading networks rather than by Viking explorers. However, this explanation is weakened by the fact that this clade is not present in mainland Portugal or Spain, where most trading vessels originated. One could also argue that earlier mouse populations from Portugal were entirely displaced later on by clade F arrivals. However, this would require an exceptionally complete population replacement, which is in fact uncommon in island colonization patterns. Or accidental transport, perhaps? Could clade F mice have arrived through 16th or 17th century English or Dutch or other northern European trading ships? This is in fact theoretically possible, but the concentration of clade F in particular locations uh, like Terceira and Santa Maria suggests an earlier and more direct introduction as trade routes in later centuries would have likely distributed these mice more evenly across all of these islands and not in these very specific locations. So in conclusion, the genetic evidence from house mice in the Azores provides quite a compelling case for the pre-15th century Northern European contact, most plausibly linked to Viking explorers. The presence of clade F, a genetic lineage absent from Portugal and Spain, but common in Viking territories, is quite a strong argument. And we also have similar findings in Madeira, where mouse genetics and radiocarbon dating as well confirm a pre-Portuguese Norse presence. If we think about the well-documented Viking ability to reach distant lands and distant Atlantic islands, um, this makes a landing in the Azores very plausible, um, whether accidental or perhaps even intentional. And we also know uh, about the fact that they reached Spain, they attacked Sevilla even, according to some Arabic writings. Historical maps, again, also suggest um, a previous knowledge about these islands, but then again, we do not have any direct archaeological evidence. We have this genetic uh, data from mice, and this adds to a growing body of research indicating earlier human activity. And what is most interesting is that such new methods really help us understand the Viking world much better, because neither the written sources nor the archaeological ones can tell us the whole story about these movements. The study can be found in the description if you want to check it out more thoroughly. And if you're interested in Viking exploration, I recently held a lecture on the Viking presence in the Atlantic, covering Iceland, Greenland and Newfoundland with a wealth of fascinating information. So thank you so much for watching. This was Irina. Take care and till next time.